Hey everybody, are you also looking for some kind of tool that you could use to learn something about astrodynamics? Well, today I have something for you. So stay tuned and we will take a first look into a tool that will help us to understand, well, the universe. Hey and welcome everybody, Thomas here. Today I would like to show you a small introduction of a tool called Universe Sandbox. Now, normally on my channel, I would like to focus exclusively on open source tools and so on to, well, to show you or to show education about space science and astronomy and astrophysics uh, without, well, paying anything, right? Because the community is very strong. We have a lot of tools there. Also, I show some Python coding if you're deep into coding. But um, there, in, for Universe Sandbox, I have to make an exception, not because I'm getting paid or for or so, or I'm having a contract with them. No, it's because this tool is very, very complex. It, it includes so many things in astrodynamics that I would really like to use it to show you and explain certain things in the solar system, in the universe, and so on. So, Without further ado, I would say let's dive into this um, tool. And um, again, you can, I think, get this tool from Steam. So um, look for Universe Sandbox and there you can get it. And before we start, one thing, of course, I would like to um, also focus more, although I would also focus on open source stuff. So the open source things will also be shown. Uh, don't worry about that. There are other things like Stellarium, I already, already explained them in the past, but I think now that I would like to focus also more and more on non-coding things for the general public, for, for let's say for the non-coders. Um, there will also be some more recent videos coming out about this stuff. But well, let's dive directly into Universe Sandbox. Well, I would say let's start with the Universe Sandbox application. Now, as I already said, this application costs some bucks on Steam. So um, again, I'm not doing any advertisement or so. I do not get paid by a Universe Sandbox. I just bought it by myself to show you what we can do with it. And I would like, first of all today, just give you a short walk around what the capabilities of this tools. So we are not um, focusing on any simulation today or creating our own simulations but we will do our um, we will just have a little walkthrough now this is the screen the default screen you get when you load the um, I wanted to say game because it's on Steam but the application if you just hit the play button you see all the different objects revolving around the Sun so this is like the default setting with the Sun in the center Mercury Venus Earth all the other planets and also the um, some asteroids as well as some trans-Neptunian objects and also some comets. So if we zoom out, we see there is a lot of stuff going on. Now here, for example, this um, minor planet, Sedna, pretty interesting. It has a pretty large um, orbit, as you can see. And there are also some kind of strange artifacts, you may guess, but let's go through it and discuss a little bit how this application works. Now, there is a, there's, an online, um, there's an online wiki page or something like that, a documentation where all the equations are shown and so on, so it's highly sophisticated. I will not go into too much into detail, but I would say let's go and walk through the basic settings of this tooling. Um, well, on the bottom you have like three options, the, simula the sim part, um, view and tools. Now here's a simulation, if we just expand it a little bit, we see here in this scenario we have 630 objects and 32 are attracting. Now what does it mean? It means that we have, well, 630 objects apparently in the solar system in this simulation, but only 32 have a gravitational field. So the others uh, are assumed as having no gravitational pull. Now you may say, well, this is physically not correct, and I f fully agree. The thing is that um, multi-body problems um, in, 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 in astrodynamics, so especially in the using in, in the gravity, considering gravity, they cannot be uh, computed analytically. You have to do it in a numerical simulation, and this numerical simulation is like um, computing the gravitational forces between each object for each time step, uh, for each time step, and then after iterating one step, the next step is being computed with respect to all the different objects. And the problem is if you have more objects, you need more computational power. And if you have very, very small object, like let's say, I don't know, a one kilometer size asteroid, you can assume that the gravitational pull of such an object 
for let's say Jupiter is pretty small so you can neglect that and that's also a good thing to do if, if you do for example asteroid research you can and you're not interested in any perturbances then you can simply ignore the gravity of the objects and make the two body problem out of it and yeah all the other objects are revolving but you have of course to consider that yeah well that uh, that any potential effects yeah they are being ignored and over the millennia um, we have larger and larger deviations but yeah again here we have some uh, settings where we can enable the gravity collisions fragmentation and also the temperature so the simulation the temperatures of the objects are also simulated i will show you this just in a moment and then we have here also some other things that are actually not physically cor they're not correct but um they have like there's like no you cannot really you, you cannot observe a solar system with a, with a different gravitational constant since it's a constant but you can change it and see what happens so we will do this um, in the next videos and see what happens and try to explain it from an astronomical page but for now take a look at it start using it and see what happens now there are also some advanced settings um, these advanced settings you see here for example the time step schema and the integrator and so on these are the settings that are being used for the numerical integration right so if you have here the integrator then you have like for example the Euler method or so I think the Euler is um, yeah it also writes here very simple I think the Euler was also the very first one you learn when you study astro uh, astrophysics or even physics I can't really remember but I think Euler was there and also Archi2 the Runga Kutte second order integrator so these two things are being well I learned them in studies but it's long ago maybe we make a video about these two things maybe also for those of you who would like to do some coding and then we can have a look and compare it with this tool so there are nice, nice links between this tool and also maybe Python now here are other settings like for the collisions, the fragmentation and what have you. For now I would say we leave it as it is now. The second, uh, second menu is the view. Yeah, here also basically how you would like to visualize stuff. For now we have like the trails of the object but you can also visualize the orbits. And here for some orbits you see this 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 kind of edges you know this this corners and these are artifacts of this integration um, process right so especially these objects with a huge with a large orbit there um, the time step have an effect on it that you only integrate between very large sections and then you do, uh, it does not appear as a smooth curve like you have here because it's actually also not true because these are linear fragments being attached to each other and this linearis linearization of the orbit you see perfectly here in this example of this object is floating around so let's switch back to trails um, the grid topic, uh, the one thing you may know from my other videos, um, we have like a three-dimensional space. This is like the ecliptic plane you see here. The ecliptic plane is the plane where the Earth re revolves around the Sun. But for a certain reference time, it's actually J2000, which means for a particular date in the year 2000. Because due to gravitational pertub uh, perturbations, the Earth also shifts a little bit up and down with respect to this reference frame so this reference frame would theoretically change with every second so we set it for a certain date and AU means astronomical union which is the um, which is the uh, distance between um, which is the distance between the Sun and the Earth and I'm a little bit confused of this of these letters here now we have here 0.6 AU here is Earth Earth is actually at 1 AU, so I don't know what's going on here. It's a little bit strange. And here is also 6 AU. I don't know, maybe this is some kind of, of bug or so here in the, in, in the display, or the reference point is set somewhere else. I'm not sure about that. Let's click on the Earth maybe for a second. Uh, we can check in a second whether we have here 1 AU, but this looks a little bit weird. Uh, the habitable zone is the zone around uh, this particular star, our sun, where we have liquid water. And it's not a surprise that our Earth is perfectly here in this green zone. Uh, here you see also this um, interpolation here. And Venus is actually also there, but due to the, um, well, it's of course closer to the sun and also has a way different atmosphere. It's way, way hotter. 
and you see also Mars is uh, revolving here. It's actually also part of the habitable zone, but make terraforming Mars uh, is linked with other problems like, uh, for example, no atmosphere, no magnetic field, and so on. So let's turn this off also. And then we have the markers, so we can also display all objects we have here, making things a little bit easier to click and look around how it looks like. Now, go back turning this off. I have to read again, I have to check why this grid thingy shows us 0.6. Maybe it's referring to this point here. This could be then it's some kind of display uh, error. Anyway, here we have like different settings only for viewing, so this has no physical meaning. Now the tools, um, this is like really insane what you can do. I remember this uh, Universe Sandbox when it came out like, I don't know, years, years, years ago. We can do a lot of things. We can um, add materials, we can change the composition of planets, we can add gases to planets, to Earth and see how it behaves and so on. These are the things we will take a look um, over time. I would say for now, play around, but uh, yeah, for example, use for example the planetscaping tool and try it out on Earth. Now, speaking of Earth, we can also click on the objects and then we have different um, settings being displayed here. The main settings, like for example, the math with respect to Earth, well, doesn't surprise that it's one Earth weight. The average density, we have also here the average temperature and also the um, orbital velocity of around 30 kilometers per second. So this is like the speed around the Sun. Now if we expand it a little bit we see here some 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 clouds and so on but these are not real-time data right it's just some 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 kind of animation of course and here we have a lot of stuff we all can observe uh, monitor and we can also change yeah which makes things also sometimes chaotic but also interesting to see what happens so we have here the entire overview we have here the motion where we can for example adjust and change the speed as well uh, as the distance here you see also one au so it should be at one au i don't know what the grid thing um, meant and of course we can here set the orbital period and also the pericenter the apocenter the inclination and what have you so you can even change the inclination and see what happens um, over time simulated over thousands and thousands of years over eons surface it's a feature i really like but um, i have to say i don't know how detailed that is um detailed in the sense of um i I assume, again I don't know, but I assume you really can't create some highly sophisticated climate models uh, like on a supercomputer, but at least you get a basic understanding of how things work and change over time. So yeah, um, I will dive into the documentation of this topic because I don't want to talk uh, yeah, wrong, wrong things, let's say. Uh, we've also here the composition of iron, oxygen, and you see it is really insane. You can do a lot, a lot of stuff and also add moons to the to the earth, remove our moon, see what happens and so on. Now the thing is, of course, uh, in this tool we can play around a lot. We can, um, now let's focus the sun, we can um, change a lot of stuff. I mean, theoretically I can spam now thousands of videos with this, but for what's the purpose, right? I mean, there's like a like a certain gap I would say between doing some scientific stuff and entertainment and there are other YouTubers using this tool you know let's say let's see what happens if we crash 10,000 asteroids on earth and so on of course it's also interesting to see and know but I think other YouTubers are doing that I would like to use this tool a little bit from a scientific perspective and try to make some educational content to show you how things work how dynamics work and what are the reasons why certain things work because sometimes we see the simulation but what's the reason yeah like as i said for example the integrator this runga kutte for example or the euler and if you are a little bit more advanced with coding then you can of course switch also to then the coding videos and get an even deeper understanding here on the left side on the burger menu we have here some guides tutorials and also also we can open some existing um, simulations again this is just an introduction video today I would like to use this tool also in the future for those of you who are not, let's say, code savvy, but would like to learn more about uh, our cosmos. And until then, thank you very much for listening and see you next time.